Cruising to Noosa, man. Yeah, bro. How much longer we got to go? Uh, I don't know, I think like 100 k's or something. Right. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, bro. What is that noise? Um, <laughs> Have you been ignoring it or is it new? Um, it's just sort of started. Unfortunately, I don't have an oil pressure gauge, but it's definitely engine. It sort of comes and goes though. Oh, really? Yeah, it's what weird. Is, what is your diagnosis? Um, your ear hole diagnosis. I'm really hoping it's like top end, but I'm pretty sure it's worse than that. Do you want to have a look? Yeah, let's have a look. That sounds alright. Um, does that mean motor cactus? I guess so. Or should we uh, give Alan a call and see <laughs> if he thinks we'll make it or not? Oh! oh. <laughs> what's up, bro? Hey, bro, what's happening? Uh, stuff. And things? Uh -huh. Yeah, right. Hey, um, so we're about like 100 k's from your place, um, and. The engines just started to rattle. Do you reckon we'll like get to your place or not? What's the worst that can happen, bro? <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> um, all right, cool. I guess we'll just keep trekking along then. Are we doing this? Yeah, let's we do it. it. We're not doing the tow truck thing. No, let's do it, bro. We'll just drive it. Worst case is Vi we get a tow truck closer to our Vi place. Viking death, dude. Let's just drive it till it dies. <laughs> <clears throat> and everyone says RBs are indestructible. Man, that rattle hurts my feelings. Uh -huh. That noise. We made it, bro. Just. Did you hit limiter? All the time. Loved it. Broken RB, Alan. Mm. They, they do that. <laughs> What's the solution? Oh, we already know the solution. Everybody already knows the solution to this problem. Yeah. But the car's here. Yeah. That's mad. No That's more good. half cut. What's the plan, gents? Gonna put a Nissan V8 in it, VH41 to be precise. How are we gonna do that, Alan? What's the next step? Drop it from height. And it'll wedge itself in there. Right. That'll work. What is the main differences between, say, something like this and a 350 Chev or an LS1? Well, this is obviously, it's a Japanese engine, so they tend to put the same sort of technology into the V8s as they do into all the other engines they build. So yeah, cool. it's very similar to the valve train, similar to a so SR20, um, it's got finger followers for the cams, um, double row chains, that sort of thing. So uh, it's pretty pretty advanced for its time, this being an engine from obviously designed in the late 80s. Yeah, the first of its VH45 that came out um, probably in about 89, I think. Um, obviously a little bit bigger than this. I don't know why they reduced the capacity, but that's, that's for Mr. Nissan to tell us. Um, but yeah, this engine's the mid 90s, so it's very similar to VH45 with just a lower capacity. Yeah, cool. And obviously, this here is cam control, yep? Yep, that's um, just uh, variable cam timing. It's just an on off switch type setup, so it's not um, constantly variable or anything like that. So the ECU will only control this as an on off function rather than a yeah. sensed position function? It just function. goes from one timing to another when the, when the oil solenoid opens up. Yeah, cool. Does the job though. And yeah, as you mentioned, timing chain as opposed to a belt. Makes it a lot more compact in the front. 
Yeah, it's just our Nissan rolls. Do love a good chain. Why is it going in the bin? Because it's old school. What's old school? The cable. Benny doesn't like the cable throttle, so we're putting drive-by wire on it. Why are we putting drive-by wire on it? Because it's good. That's that's a good answer. How does it feel to be a Volvo owner, Benny? Wouldn't know. Really? Aren't we working on one right now? Oh, never heard that before. Yeah, this exhaust is like 70 mil weird Japanese size, eh? Yeah, it's too small. For sale. Is the, exhaust getting, is the exhaust getting chucked in the bin? Oh, no, it's so no bad. way it is. This is going to get sold to a compatriot. Mick, we're all machining. How are they touching? Oh, is it touch it up there? Because when slam. There's no sparkles. It's just got race clearances. <laughs> the HX is self self building HX bearing. Puns of shit. Really? Coming from a dude who likes Seinfeld and thinks that's funny. That's right, you like Seinfeld. Yeah, I know, man. Weird shit happened in the 90s when they did a mobile phone. Dude, stuff existed before you were alive, dude. I was there for Seinfeld, man. I was in high school. Benny, Benny, yeah, bro. you look exhausted. What'd you call him? Stancy pants. What do you mean, dude? These cars are stancy at all. Look at all that gap. Look, they can fit like a whole hand in there. It's almost like Nissan forgot to put the fuel tank in here and then decided to put it there. Isn't this where GD at like Skyline tanks go? No. No? That's why they're not allowed down in the States, isn't it? Why? Can't have outboard fuel tanks in the States. Really? Since those pinto things used to blow up back in the 70s. God bless America. Buick's got an outboard tank. It's like a drop tank, it looks like a Piranha. Yeah, SLR 5000, bro. I'm gonna paint it silver and get aluminium straps to hold the tank on. Mint bar! Probably can have these ZZ stuff on those sedans that they can have. The utes and coupes because the tanks are in the middle. And then I think the VE they changed it. That would make a lot of sense. It's a bit of a dumb idea. I'm not 100% sure. Because we've got to pull the whole shaft out to get it redoed anyway. What's that for? Is that tail shaft loop? This, yeah. yeah. I think it's just basically a tail shaft loop, so if and when the tail shaft snaps at the centre, 
bearing carrier it just goes instead of a death. And representing Queensland, we have a thong wearing clutch man. Clutch man. Uh -huh. Clutch man says. Hard to find bolts on earth. Yeah, I know. Oh. I searched from Bundaberg to the Gold Coast. It took three weeks, but they showed up. Someone had a hundred incorrect order. Oh, uh best. -huh. Yeah. yeah. What's in it? Clutch. Wow. Really glad I asked. <laughs> Thanks, man. I don't know yet. We haven't pulled it apart. We haven't got that far, Martin. But this is the exciting thing. You know when you buy like a Japanese car and you pull it apart and you find all this cool stuff that someone spent like stupid money on? I think, don't quote me on it, but I think it has like some fancy Nismo billet flywheel in it. That's good. We'll find out. Potentially. It's a Nismo. The hair. Copper mix. How come that wasn't much worse to dry? Mm -hmm. It always shuttered. What That's is cool. It? Nismo copper mix. So copper mix actually refers to the way the disc's made. They actually weave like copper fiber in the disc instead of an organic fiber. So it's sort of, it's like a stage one upgrade over the standard sprung center organic face. So, actually looks like they gave it a hard time putting it together, eh? Oh. Yeah. I think when they installed it, they wound the box in and it grabbed the center. And the hand. Oh. That was almost a fail, wasn't that it? That was nearly a hand, man. <laughs> so this is the diff center from the VH41. And this is a rear diff center out of a GC8 WRX. We were hoping to actually use that center in the front of the Stagia, but as it turns out, the center going into the Stagia is actually bigger than the rear of a GC8. So this is probably one of the reasons why rear wheel drive WRXs don't work is because the diff is just too small. So when you hear someone say R160, for instance, it actually refers to the diameter of the crown wheel. And this being a 170 mil one, so obviously the diameter here is approximately 170. And then this one here being the GC8 one, which is 160. 
so you lose size through the material. Not it. But that's an LSD center, is what you're saying? Yeah. Cool. Do you think it'll matter much in this kind of all drive thing? I don't really think that having an open diff in this particular application is going to be a massive issue. Um, it just would have been nice while it's apart to change it over. But now that we've found it's different, it's not the end of the world. So. R and D, man. Run with the original and. So we're gonna whack this back. We had to repair. We had to repair this anyway. So yeah. we're gonna whack it back together. No worries. So we did have to repair the case of the front diff. Just had a little repair in here. Um, so it was stripped for that as well. So now we'll just reassemble it and go from there. end of this engine it's pretty um, special or over engineered perhaps um, so six bolt mains which is pretty common these days for any V engine to give it um, lateral support um, but these things have also got a big crank girdle on them which we which is just yeah massive overkill but massive overkill means it's a really strong engine so it's a pretty good thing so like what's the weak point then Al I mean like when you start leaning on this <clears> thing <throat> if it's got fairly strong internals I mean where where's it gonna break Oh, it's probably rod bolts or um, rods themselves, less so. That'd probably be the only thing that would let go. Yep. Or unless you're pinging away and then you're breaking pistons, which is not related to this anyway, yeah. right? Yeah. Strength failure is different to bad tuning failure. Uh, We're not going to have failure, are we, Benny? Zero failure. We're right? going to be mature and sensible with our tune. <coughs> mm hmm. Right. Clean, not, do um, I? Rod studs already, bro. Not bolts. It's already studded. Yeah, it's just old school.
pull tight. Converting to push tight. Says the man with black grease on his eyeball. Best spot for it. Is there goober on that? Sorry, bro? Is there goober on this room? Just like walk it in handy. So now converted to push type. So at the moment we've basically reassembled everything back onto the VH41 that's been painted while we're away. So rock covers are back on, put all new rock cover gaskets, refitted all the water crossover and the thermostat. The exhaust manifolds have been bolted onto the heads. We've also done a bit of repair, it's replaced studs. Um, sump and diff have been finally fitted, that's all final fit ups done. So basically now we've just got to pull the engine off the stand, bolt the motor in the box together with the adapter plate check the clutch heights once that's confirmed engine and box will be split again then we'll put the engine in the in the car on the modified subframe once that's bolted up we'll bolt the box to the engine inside the car and we'll go from there what he said <laughs> mad next time on the double unicorn stagia build